What's up? Eddie Bear here. Do you want to spice up your footage with smooth slider movements, but you don't want to spend a huge amount of cash on professional gear? Today I'm going to show you how to build a professional camera slider out of an IKEA curtain rail. It sounds stupid, but it's really easy to do and you don't need much stuff for it. All the parts you need, you can almost get at IKEA. Sure, you will need some screws and stuff, but you can get those at your local hardware store. But before we get to the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date whenever I do tech or drone related stuff like this today. And also check out my homepage eddy-bear.com to see the full written articles about my work. So let's jump right in. The first thing you will need on your IKEA shopping list is the Vidga Freewheeled Curtain Rail. This one will be stable enough to support a heavy camera, so make sure that you don't pick the one railed version. Full disclosure, in my tutorial I'm using the predecessor of the Wittgar curtain rail, but it doesn't matter, you can also apply the same things I'm doing here to the Wittgar curtain rail and you'll be just fine. The next thing you will need is a pack of sliders. You will only need 8 sliders in total, that means you will have plenty of spares left. The last thing you will need is a Legatim cheap chopping board that will serve as the base mount for the ball head. After you completed your IKEA shopping spree, you now can finally start to assemble your do-it-yourself camera slider. So let's begin. Let's start by cutting down three pieces of the chopping board. The first slice will be 8 cm wide and will be used as a base plate for the ball head. The other two slices will be 4 cm wide and will serve as the feet of the slider. Now it's time to sort the hooks from the sliders. You will only need 8 sliders in total, so you can put away the rest. Now you take a wire cutter and cut away the round mounting part as close to the body of the slider as you can. You want the surface of the slider as even as possible, so take a file and start to rub off the rest of the hook. After you're finished, it's time to take care of the base plate for the ball head. The sliders will be arranged in three rows on the base plate. The center marking on the base plate is reserved for the ball head. Now align the other sliders around the ball head so it will later fit into the rails. Place your markings as precise as you can, cause if the sliders aren't aligned perfectly, you will experience problems with your footage and the sliding movement. Now it's time to drill our first holes. We'll begin with the base plate and make sure to work as precise as you can so you won't have any stuttering movement afterwards. Next up are the sliders. Here you also need to work as precise as you can. Now it's time for our first assembly. I only use 2mm screws so I won't put too much pressure on the sliders when I try to screw them in. Don't screw in the first sliders all the way, leave them a little room for movement. Now place the base plate on the rails and slide in the additional sliders and start to screw in the other screws. Make sure to evenly adjust the pressure points on the sliders so it will still be able to move freely. Now it's finally time to bring in the big guns. Depending on the head you're going to use on this slider, you will maybe need another kind of hole than I do for my ball head. Be aware when you buy the screw for the ball head that most of the camera gear is equipped with imperial thread so a metric screw won't fit the imperial thread. Since I'm using a heavy full frame camera, I also will need to add some feet to my slider so it won't tip over. 
I'll also add adjustable feet to it so it will be more flexible when it comes to uneven ground. Since the chopping board was made out of plastic, I'll also add some threads to it so it will be easier to adjust the feet in the field. With this method it's really easy to put on or remove the adjustable feet and you can do this all by your hand and you don't need any additional tools. Now it's time to bring the feet and the slider together. For this I'm drilling a hole in the middle of the feet. To mount the feet slide in a nut in the bottom rail. For me an M5 nut worked the best cause if it's tight enough it won't be able to spin. Now it's finally time to mount the feet on the slider. And last but not least put in the fully assembled slider with the base plate and the ball head back into the rail. And now you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. If you've done everything right the movement of the slider will be smooth as butter. The really cool thing about this slider is you can always improve your settings and you can improve the build of the whole slider itself. And if you have to shoot a longer scene, just go back to IKEA and buy yourself another rail and assemble them together. Let me give you some examples with this setup here. Depending on the head you were using, you even can include pan movements while you're sliding the camera. So now we've finished building our own inexpensive camera slider. What do you think about the footage that you can get out of this design? Are there things you would do differently? Hit me up in the comments and tell me what you would change in this design to improve it. Also, if you have questions regarding the build, don't hesitate, hit me up also and I will help you as far as I can. I hope this slider will help you spice up your footage and if you liked today's episode hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and as always thank you for watching and see you next time.